So good morning, everybody. May the Lord continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. As I was meditating on what to speak on this morning, something came to my heart because last night I had two separate demonic attacks. All right. And when you get a demonic attack, don't panic. God is in control. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so I give praise to God this morning. Perhaps uh, God just wanted me, allowed me to have that experience so that I can minister on this message this morning. And I wake up smiling. I want you to know that even when you have bad dreams, it's not from God. You want to wake up smiling and in control. And I hope that when that bad dream came, you prayed. You woke up and you prayed, you took authority, knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. It's so crucial in these last hours to know who we are in Christ. Let no one define you. Let no one control you. Let no demon control you because God is in control. And we can't have two masters over our lives. We can't have demons controlling us and God controlling us. It's one or the other. You cannot serve God and serve mammon, like the Bible says. We cannot serve God and serve a demon. Fear is a demon. Anxiety is a demon. Worry is a demon. All the things that we go through, all of these little things that come our way, distraction is a demon. Jesus Christ is Lord over them all. And so this morning, I wanted to talk about demonic attacks. And I can't finish it in one go because it's so deep and wide. Praise the Lord. So I want to speak on the fact that demonic attack is demonic harassment. You know, when you're going through issues at work, in your marriage, amongst your friends, even, you know, financially, whatever it is, and you're feeling harassed, God will never harass you. He's not that type of God. No, no, no. God does not harass. God does not force you. God will impress on you. God will suggest to you. God will advise you, give you wisdom, point you in the right direction that my son, my daughter, this is the way to go. Walk in it. He will not force you. And God looks at our obedience, waiting on us because he's given us a will. We can either will and be obedient to the Lord or will and be disobedient to the Lord. We can either be obedient to demons and be disobedient to the Lord. It's your choice. It's my choice. And so, so what, the, what, does, what does that harassment mean? When demons come to harass you, they can harass you through your dreams. They can harass you through other people. They can harass you through family, through friends, through children, through adults. You can feel harassed. And you can even face that on a daily basis. You can be assaulted by the enemy. So what does this harassment mean? Harassment means illegal behavior. It's illegal. There are laws in our kingdom. So we must not allow the enemy to harass us. My message to you this morning is do not allow the enemy to harass you. It's illegal behavior. It causes mental or emotional suffering. You can suffer from that harassment mentally. You begin to hear voices, oppression, telling you you're no good. Kill yourself. Kill yourself. Look, you're no good on this earth. This is what the enemy does. He will isolate to get rid of. And God is telling me to tell somebody this morning, don't allow the enemy to harass you through fear, through worry, through anxiety. It's unwanted contact. You don't need the enemy to contact you. You need contact from the Holy Spirit, from the Lord Jesus Christ. 
So when the enemy is harassing you, you need to get rid of him. You need to get rid of that spirit. You need to really speak back. Don't allow fear to disable you, to affect your emotions, to put you in a bad mood, to get you angry. The enemy will insult you, will threaten you. You might be sleeping and you have a sudden panic. That is the enemy. That's a demonic attack right there. That will not come from God because the Bible says that the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Praise the Lord. Harassment can come through offensive language. Offensive language. You are fat. When somebody is fat, he'll tell them they're fat. That's harassment, okay? Then he'll go back to the one that is thin and says you're too thin. And then he'll go back to, 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 to somebody and says you're too short. And to the very tall one, you're too tall. You see, they don't leave you alone. The harassment is daily. If I come to you and I harass you every day, you will deal with me. So why do you allow those demons to harass you? Don't allow demons to harass you. They come through discrimination. It's not only racial harassment. It's weight harassment. It's job harassment. It's harassment at every level, and the devil will deceive. He will. He will uh, uh, um, defragment us. He divides us. You're white. She's black. She's yellow. She's pink. She's this. Your hair is curly. Your hair is straight. Your hair is blonde. Your hair is brown. We don't want to know. Get behind Satan. Your curly hair is beautiful. Your straight hair is beautiful. Your 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 white skin is beautiful. Your black skin is beautiful. Your brown skin is beautiful. And I've never seen yellow skin. I've never seen black skin. I've only seen brown skin. The devil is a liar. And the reason why is so that you can lose your confidence. Don't allow the enemy to harass you even in your job. Don't lose your confidence during your exams. Don't lose your confidence. Don't lose your confidence, young people. When demons come to harass, they are annoying. They will annoy you through your children. And I'm not saying your children are demons. Don't get me wrong. Don't look at the person. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So, and the Bible says we're not fighting against flesh and blood. So I don't want us to look at somebody else like a demon, but I want you to understand that they're spirits that work behind the scenes and the tool that they use is human beings. That's what I want you to understand today. They use human beings. They go around the back and they work behind the scenes. They don't want you to see them. A demon will not directly manifest itself to you, but will use somebody against you. Demons trouble through harassment. They will trouble you. Have you had trouble through family? Have you had trouble through friends? Have you had trouble at work? Have you had trouble in your finances? Have you had trouble? Trouble comes through all sorts of means. The demon will send arrows, financial attacks. Suddenly, your business is going down and you don't know what to do. Suddenly, all the money you had is going down daily. You don't have nothing. And if you don't know who you are in Christ, to begin to speak into your circumstances to get rid of that demonic attack of poverty <laughs> god forbid that we walk into poverty demons cause offense so when you're regularly attacked in your dream it's a it's demonic harassment i went somewhere yesterday and i believe that that's where that harassment came from Atmosphere matters. Because I was in my spirit wondering, Lord, where is this coming from? Where is this coming from? And then I remembered where I went. They were not demons. They were lovely people. But in my spirit, I was discerning some things. 
You see, because the devil will not wear horns. Listen, don't be looking for a red cape and two horns. You're missing it right there. He's an angel of light. The Bible calls him an angel of light. He will wear similar to what you're wearing. He will look handsome. But the intention is evil. Is evil. And so we've got to have discernment. And the Lord revealed to me the spiritual attachment. Oh, I thought, okay. Yeah. So these devils attach themselves to me. I said, Lord, I break that demonic attachment in the name of Jesus. I break it. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. Get big hands. First time, I just prayed. I pleaded the blood of Jesus. I took authority and I went back to sleep. <laughs> but you and I know they could come back anytime. And they came back again. And I woke up again and I rebuked that attachment. I broke it. You've got to deliver yourself from afflictions. Don't wait for a deliverance minister. That man is like you and like me. And he's going to be, to, to go in the presence of God, to know what to do. You can deliver yourself from these things. If there's something in your home that's troubling you, speak to it, cast it out, drive it out. Stop them from harassing you. Don't allow demons to harass you in your own home, in your own marriage, with your own children, in your own family, drive them out in the name of Jesus. You cannot drive them out in your own authority because we don't have that level of power. But we can drive them out in the authority that Christ has given to us. So there's no reason to, to fear. There's no reason to be afraid. In fact, we're supposed to be thriving. You're supposed to just get up and take authority. The Bible says in John 16, 33, in the world, you will have tribulation. You will have problems. You will have issues in the world. But take courage, take heart, take courage. I, Jesus, I have overcome the world. Satan is the God of this world. And God is saying, I have overcome the world and the God of this world. So take courage. Don't allow demons to harass you. Maybe your sister is always rude to you. That's harassment using your sister against you. And so what you need to do is go behind the scenes and say, Father, I take authority in the name of Jesus against this demon that is working behind the scenes using my brother against me, using my sister against me. I take authority and I cast that demon out. I bind the activities of that demon in Jesus' name. You will see it will subside. And you just give God praise. It will subside. Go behind the scenes. Why are you doing this? Because Jesus has already sentenced evil by his blood. So this morning, he's saying, take legal action. It's an Ill illegal activity that is going on. Demonic harassment is illegal activity. What are you going to do? Take legal action. A lot of us now, if somebody comes to your home and says, I'm the owner of your house, you say, excuse me. You don't own this house. Why? Because you're confident in your ownership. You're confident that you have authority. You're confident that you've signed an agreement concerning that house. It is the same thing in the realm of the spirit. Be confident that you've signed an agreement by the blood of Jesus. It is stamped. It is agreed that whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you, you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Jesus made an agreement right there. Matthew 18, 18, whatsoever, anything that you take authority and you bind. So if you don't know your rights, you won't take action. This is the problem we have today. Christians are being harassed and they're not taking action. 
Prayer is good. I'm not saying don't pray. Take action. You understand that? Take action. Take steps. Do something. Don't just pray and leave it to God. God is saying, I've left it to you. You're saying, God, I've given it to you. You say, oh, Lord, Lord, is saying, I died for you. I gave you the keys of the kingdom that whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Glory be to God. Matthew 16, isn't it? So what are we waiting for? Who are you waiting for? You're waiting. That's why you've been waiting. That's why you've been waiting. Because God is saying, I have given you the authority that I gave to my son. Through my son, Jesus Christ, you've got that authority. The Bible says that no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. No weapon. No weapon. It cannot prosper because of the blood of Jesus Christ. So we must recognize the power that we have in Christ Jesus. If you don't recognize that power, you're losing your rights right there. You must destroy the darkness. Christ gave us the power to destroy darkness. And darkness is unlawful. It comes against us unlawfully. You must come against darkness lawfully by the word of God. Praise the Lord. So, number one, we must take authority. Take authority. And what is your authority? Is the power and the ability that Christ has given you to do something about your situation. It's the power and the authority, the ability that Christ has given you to do something about your situation. You can change it. A higher authority conferred power to you. He gave you the keys of the kingdom. He gave you the power. You are a powerful human being. But because you don't recognize who you are and you're not confident in who you are, the enemy is harassing you. That's why. That's why. Use your authority that Christ has given you. It is your right. It is your power. It is your... You know when the police comes to somebody's house, who they have a right, a warrant. They have a warrant to come in. They'll knock on the door. And whether you say no or yes or don't come in, they're coming in anyway. They'll show you the warrant. This is my warrant and I'm coming in. They have a right. They have a legal right by the government authorities to enter your home. And you are saying to Satan, you don't have a right because this home is mine. Where is your authority? Where is your authority? Where are your legal papers? Where is the word of God that you have? Where is your signature in Christ by the blood? You need to show that to the enemy. Present your, 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 your signed agreement and say, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, I cast you out of this home. I reject you. I resist you. You foul spirits in the name of Jesus. Because they will not, they will try and force themselves into your space into your dreams, into your job, into your marriage, into your children, into your peace. The, the, the enemy has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He'll come and steal your joy. If you allow him to steal your joy by being moody all the time, he will take away your goods. Listen, listen. Don't allow him to steal your joy. Don't be, don't be ruled by circumstances. Oh, I've got exams. I've got this. I've got that. Oh, you don't understand. My bills are high. The whole world is going through the same. There's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. Are you running out of petrol? My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You will speak to that petrol tank. Be filled in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you have authority and confidence in Christ, miracles begin to happen. Listen, begin to use it, begin to use it. Jesus conferred his authority upon you. Luke 24, 49. I'm going to read from the Amplified before I read from the New King James. It says, listen carefully. I'm speaking to you. 
Church of New Destiny, listen carefully. Jesus says, I'm sending the promise of my Father. The promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. I'm sending you the promise of my Father, the Holy Spirit, upon you. I'm sending the Holy Spirit upon you, but you are to remain in the city of Jerusalem. He was talking to the disciples until you're clothed, until you're fully equipped with power from on high. If you don't wait on the Lord, if you don't read the word, if you don't wait on the Lord, you will never renew your strength. You will never be strong. You will talk about all your issues to everybody, but if you don't go into the word of God and begin to soak yourself in the word, there will be no solution to that problem. Because the word is the answer. His name is Jesus. He told the, the disciples, remain. Some of us are not remaining. We're going up, down, everywhere. Remain. Remain until you are clothed. Until you're equipped. Read the word. Remain in the word. Until you are equipped. We need equipping. You know, I was asking the Lord. I've been asking him for a few days about a certain issue. You know about somebody and i said lord give me the clarity show me what is happening here reveal it to me give me wisdom how do i navigate around this issue that this person is going through and the lord showed me is because they're not taking authority they're not fighting back they've accepted it <laughs> the bible says we will trample upon scorpions and serpents scorpions will come in your space Serpents will come through dreams. They will come in your business, your jobs. There are serpents at work. They manifest through human beings. Have you seen some people when they're being delivered, they, their head will be turning like a snake, like that. Their head will be turning like a snake. That's the spirit that is operating through them. Other people will start swarming like a fish. That's a mermaid spirit. So all these things that we've labeled, we've labeled some things. You, see, you know, somebody that's swearing all the time, their mouth can't keep quiet. Blah, 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 blah. They're just swearing all the time. And then they labeled it some things is it's Tourette's. They, they call it something. What do you think that is? <laughs> we need the blood of Jesus. We need to take authority. We need to be fully equipped with power. Do you know when you're going through something and you go into the place of fasting, you fast and you pray, you wait on the Lord. The Lord will fully equip you. In fact, that demon will just leave you. I'm telling you. You'll fall under the anointing in your bedroom. Before you know it, you're free. In the New King James Version of Luke 24, 49, it says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry. Tarry means wait, remain, stay there in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. We need the power that is in the name of Jesus. Don't never read your Bible, you know, don't you? you don't, don't play with that. Because a lot of us, we pray, we talk, but we don't actually read the word. We kind of skim around it. What we need is the grace of God to read the word of God. Look, say, Lord, give me your grace to read your word. Give me your grace to read your word. Give me your grace to read your word. Help me to read the word. That is where your deliverance is. That's where the power is. When the Lord spoke to me last week and he gave me the revelation of the gates of hell shall not prevail, I jumped out of bed. Supernatural energy came into my spirit. I was in bed lying down underneath my warm quilt. When he gave me that word, I came out of bed. I was so excited. I jumped downstairs. I came to the prayer room. I began to search my scriptures. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail. You see, God empowered me right there. When you get the word, empowerment comes, confidence comes, power comes, and you will break through in the name of Jesus. You will break through. And when you tarry, this is what happens. Let's go to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. This is what happens when you wait. When you, when you wait upon the Lord, you'll be refreshed, you'll be renewed, you'll be empowered. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. This battle is not in your flesh. 
You can't fight your office with your flesh. No. You can't do that. If you go to the person and say, do you know who I am? I'm smarter than you. I'm more this than you. They'll just say, oh, yeah. But when you go in the realm of the spirit and you deal with that demonic foul spirit, they will bow to the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So you will take authority and decree the Lordship of Jesus over that situation. You will go on your knees and say, Father, I take authority in the realm of the spirit and I declare the Lordship of Jesus in this work area. I declare the Lordship of Jesus in this situation. And I bind any spirit. I bind every activity of the enemy over this person that the enemy is using in the name of Jesus. The Bible says you shall receive power. That is the power that you need to use. We need power. Without power, there is no light. Without power, there is no energy. Without power, you'll be in the dark. We need the Holy Spirit, who is the power of God. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. How do you become this witness? By the blood of the Lamb and by the power. By the blood of the Lamb. And by the power of your testimony. When you begin to testify, you become a witness. I love hearing testimonies of the goodness of God, of the faithfulness of God, of the loving kindness of God, of what God has done in other people's lives. I'm not going to lie to you. I was praying for somebody who had like tinnitus, that sound in their ears. And before I knew it, I was hearing that sound in my sleep a few days back. I thought, what's going on here? What's this? What's this? What's this? An ending, you know, tinny sound. Ooh, it's just like that. And it continued. And I thought, okay, you could sit down and be waiting for the GP or you need now to just take authority. Don't be sleeping, sleeping too much like that. If you need to wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Because if you don't take authority, that spirit will continue the activities throughout the day. So I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I silence you, Tinnitus. I silence that sound right now in the name of Jesus. And you don't have to shout. Did you know when I did that, my husband was right beside me. He didn't know nothing. <laughs> he didn't know nothing. I'm telling you. You don't need to, you see me speaking like this? I don't do that in the middle of the night when people are sleeping. I whisper it out. There's still a sound that is coming out. Praise the Lord. Spirit to spirit. Don't be in slumber. Don't rest in that thing and, and, and accept it. I'm hearing Christians saying some things that bothers me. Oh, I've got this, I've got that, I've got that. And there is, are you looking for attention or something? Sorry I'm being harsh this morning. I have to be rough sometimes. You're looking for attention. Well, don't get it that way. Because Jesus paid attention to you by dying on the cross at Calvary. Says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me and he confided it to you. And then you're saying, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. even a baby when they cry too much in the town center, the dad will start doing something. We need to discipline ourselves in the Lord. We do. And I'm not saying don't talk to somebody. Pastors are there as shepherds. I'm a pastor. If you want to talk to me, there's no harm in that. I'm not saying don't come to me. But what I'm saying is don't, 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 don't be seeking attention from that ailment. Don't sit down there and accept anything that is not of God. You must measure everything with the will of God. Is this God's will for me? Is this God's will for my lifetime? Is this how I'm going to live the rest of my life? It's not God's will. So what do you need to do then? Take action. Let me read the other amplified to you. The, the Bible says in Acts 1, 8, but you shall receive power, ability. So you're able to do something about that situation. Efficiency. You can take authority over that situation efficiently. And might. 
That means power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will have ability, you will have efficiency, and you will have might. So when fear comes, you have the ability to get rid of that fear. You have the efficiency to be confident in God that, Lord, I've dealt with it. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me that authority. You've got the might. Get rid of that fear. And you shall be my witnesses to the very ends of the earth. Praise the Lord. In Acts chapter 4, 31, the Bible says, and when they had prayed, when they had done something, when they had taken action, when they had done something, when they had prayed, the place in which the disciples were, were assembled was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of action, constantly moving, constantly doing. The Holy Spirit is never stagnant. Why must we stay there and die? And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they continued to speak the word of God with freedom and boldness and courage. I'm speaking to somebody today. Continue to speak the word of God with freedom, with boldness and with courage like the disciples did when the Holy Spirit had filled them. When they had been filled with the Spirit, are you filled with the Spirit this morning? Unless you're not. If you're not filled with the Spirit, then you will not be speaking the word of God with boldness. If you're not filled with the Spirit, then you will not be speaking the word of God with freedom. If you're not filled with the Spirit, then you will not be speaking the word of God with boldness and courage. We need boldness. We need courage. The enemy is intimidating, harassing you with boldness. He's even courageous. How dare that spirit? You go back and say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I take authority and I plead the blood of Jesus against you. Get the hands in Jesus' name. And let me tell you something. Just because you said it once, you may not see that result immediately, but keep speaking the word of God with boldness, with courage and with freedom. Keep speaking the word of God like the disciples did. They continued to speak. That's what the Bible said. They continued. You don't speak it once and oh, it's not working. I don't want to be hearing those things. It's not working. Don't tell me the word of God does not work. No, don't tell me that. No. That's a totally illegal statement. Because God is bound to his word. He has highly exalted his, his word even above his name. That's what the Bible says. And wherever he sends the word, it will not come back to him void. That's powerful. We need revelation in the word. We need to meditate on the word of God. That's why we're powerless. Honestly, I'm telling you. That's why we're powerless. That's why we're, we, we need deliverance. That's why we allow the devil to, to just chain us down right there. We need freedom. We need boldness. We need courage. We need fearless confidence. I can't speak the way I'm speaking now without fearless confidence in Christ. Because I trust him, I lean on him. I know he will speak through me. He will deliver you by the power of his word. So we need biblical, biblical strategies against evil. We need strategies, all right? What is the first one? The first strategy against the devil is first of all, remember that he has no right to torment you. He has no right to torment you. God has not given him that permission unless you give him that permission, all right? Don't allow the enemy to torment you with great clouds, feeling depressed. I used to have a friend, how are you? I'm depressed, man, I'm depressed. I'm depressed, man, I'm depressed. That's all he keeps saying. If you hang around such a person for so long, you'll be depressed yourself unless you break that cycle. Now you don't need to be depressed. We bind those words. We have to be careful what we say. Be careful. You might say it in jest, but the enemy will take it and use it against you. Don't say negative words in jest. Don't say it at all. Don't say what you don't want to see. I keep repeating that. If you say, oh, you know, you know what's gonna happen? Such and such is gonna, believe me, it's just gonna happen because you already spoken it by faith that it will happen. And you say, okay, ah, no, it's not like that. It is like that, spiritually, because we're spirit beings. Our language is spiritual. You're a spirit being. 
It's spirit to spirit. The devil don't know jokes. He's not play, playing with you. He's going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. And if we speak careless words, he will use it to devour us, God forbid. He will use it against you as a weapon. He will go and fill the other person with hatred towards you and use them to fight you, use them to, to knock you down. He has no right to torment a believer. When he's behaving in a way that you feel scared, you feel threatened, you're feeling distressed. And I'm telling you, we're all normal. We go through these things. Take authority. He has no right to torment you. You need to write that down. The devil has no right to torment me. That is your strategy. I will not allow him to torment me. Don't allow it in your dreams, in your workplace. Watch and pray. And what does he look for before he attacks? What does he look for? He's looking for a prey. He's looking for a prey. Don't become prey to the enemy. What is he looking for? He's looking for a so-called Christian, but a hypocrite. Listen, yeah. He's looking for Christian hypocrites. See, he will land on you and give you enough afflictions because he has a legal right. Because we're hypocritical. We're playing games with the body of Christ. We can't allow that. That's why we must check ourselves. That Lord deliver me from evil. Help me not to be hypocritical. Help me to be honest and sincere. Who is he looking for to attack? He's looking for people who are repeatedly in sinful behaviors. God is saying, don't do this thing. And you say, Lord, I won't do it. But you find yourself doing it. Okay, fine. No problems. And you come back and say, Lord, please help me. I don't want to do this thing again. And the Lord will deliver us. But you must make sure that you don't go back to that sin time and time again. Young people, I'm going to speak to you right now because you are the ones who have girlfriends, boyfriends. Don't go and be fornicating. Don't go and be sleeping with girls. It's dangerous. Guys, tell your girlfriend I want to wait. It's the best thing you can do. I'm telling you, disaster is waiting around the corner. Do you know how many girls have aborted babies that are even from Christian homes, God forbid? These are the ones Satan is looking for because then you will fill them with guilt and attack them even more. And then they feel bad and they feel worse. I pray over every child, every young person in this place that the spirit of the living God will protect you, that you will not fall into temptation in the name of Jesus. You rise up again. When your parents are encouraging you not to do certain things, don't do it. They know what they're talking about. And God, our heavenly father, is encouraging us because the devil is lurking around the corner. Look, he has legal grounds, okay? He will use your sin against you. He will use your sin to pull you down. If you keep repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again, and you say, next year, I will change. The year after, I will change. Don't allow the enemy to harass you because he will use that sin to harass you. He will fill you with guilt. What God wants is come, just come as you are and say, Lord, I need your help. Put your hand up. I need your help. I'm struggling in this area. Admit it. Be honest with God and say, Lord, help me, deliver me. Because what we need is deliverance. You become a prey to the enemy when we're doing things that are opposite of the will of God. God doesn't hate you, but you've, you've, you've repositioned yourself from the presence of God into the presence of the enemy. That's what happens right there. And God is saying, come my way, walk in the straight and in the narrow. The other way that you could become prey to, to the enemy is through generational sin. Generational sin. Our generations need cleansing because the sins of the forefathers have been visited onto the children and their children's children's children. If you find a disease in your family that is generational, you need to break that cycle. You need to take authority and speak life from your generation and father. This sickness will not hold us pray in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Otherwise, the enemy will be using you as prey. Take authority, plead the blood of Jesus. Generational sin also. If my great, 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 great grandfather had concubines like Solomon, like King Solomon with all his 700 wives and 300 concubines or 300 wives and 700 concubines. I need to take authority and break that lineage. I break that curse in Jesus name, whatever comes with it. And then also we become prey to the enemy through the lifestyle that we live. Some people have chosen some kind of lifestyle that the enemy will finish them with. He will destroy their souls, but they don't know. They think they're being funny. You think you've got choices. No, there's good and there's evil. There's right and there's wrong. And God is saying, walk right. Go according to my word. So if we consider ourselves as Christians and we don't take God seriously and we choose the wrong lifestyle, well, we will get the wrong result. And the enemy will hold us free. So what, do, what should a Christian look like? If, you, if we call ourselves Christians, what do we look like? Number one, we must attend church. And when I say church, I don't mean a building because the Bible tells us in, in Hebrews 10, 25, that's the instruction, just write it down because of time. Do not forsake the, the, the gathering of the brethren, fellowship with other Christians. Gather to pray together, gather to worship together, gather to talk about the Lord, gather to, to just fellowship in Christ. That's what a Christian looks like. Secondly, we must pay our tithes. That's what a Christian looks like. Put something in the offering to the Lord's kingdom for doing the work of the kingdom. I don't ask people for personal money. I'm not asking for anything, but I'm just saying what a Christian should look like. Anything I'm given, I have to pay 10% of it into the church. I just do it naturally now. It's become a part of me. If you don't know how to do that, just ask the Lord to give you grace. We all struggle. I've struggled with that before. We all struggle. Number three, we must abstain. A Christian abstains from sexual immorality. Don't watch pornography on iPad. Nobody can see you, but Jesus can see you. God can see you. Secret sins. We must abstain from secret sin, sexual immorality in all forms. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. Write it down, please. Number four, what does a Christian look like? We must love. We must love one another. We must love the world as well. We must not hate. Don't hate the world. They're all children of God. They're all creation of God. They just don't know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. And we must pray for the salvation of souls. All right. John 13, 34 and 35. John chapter 13, th verses 34 and 35. We must love. What does a Christian look like? What must we look like? We must forgive. Matthew 6, 15. We must forgive. There are several people that mention their names regularly. The Lord, I forgive this person. I forgive that person. I just check myself. I lose them and I let them go. They don't have to be in my space. I don't have to be in their space. But I must let my heart be free of bitterness, of anger against them and get on with my life. Finally, what does a Christian life look like? We must seek a relationship with Jesus. Don't just say I'm born again without relationship. Born again means I've turned around, I've changed, and I have a relationship with Jesus. Relate with him, talk to him. Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, verse 3, seek a relationship with Jesus. So when we dismiss all of this, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. Listen, you are inviting the devil's attention because really we're lying. And the devil is attracted to liars. Do you understand? If you're a liar, young person, stop lying now. But the devil is attracted to you when you tell lies. Be honest. Be honest and be honest and keep being honest. You may have to bear consequences, but it's better to be honest and be attractive to God than be a liar and be attractive to the devil. 
So if we say we're a Christian, we must look like one. Those are the qualities of a Christian. The second strategy against the enemy is to recognize that you are imperfect. Listen, we are not perfect. So don't be looking for a perfect. There's no perfect Lade here. There's no perfect anybody. There's no perfect anybody out there. I don't know who that person is. Because the day you're perfect is the day you become God. God is the only perfect. Jesus Christ is perfect. We are imperfect, but we're work in progress. He's perfecting us daily. All right. So we're not condemned. We're not condemned. We must live a repentant life. That's what God is talking about. So that we will not allow demons to keep harassing us. Somebody is fornicating and they're, 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 they're getting demonic harassment and they're wondering why. It's the enemy. Somebody is stealing and they're wondering why the enemy is attracted to them. So we must live a repentant life. We must understand our wrongs. See, admit our wrong. Oh, Lord, my thoughts have not been clean of late. I don't understand why. Do you understand? Just go to God honestly, because we know we're imperfect. Do you understand? So, Lord, my thoughts, I'm just thinking, when I see this, I don't even like them. I don't even want them. You know, and God will correct that and will give you the grace. That's what the Lord is saying, that I understand your infirmities. I understand your weaknesses. I will come and help you. And turn away from them, though. When I've helped you, turn, turn, turn away from them. Don't return to the sin. Don't go back there. Don't go back to stealing. Don't go back to fornicating. Don't go back to lying. Don't go back to those things. Because if we, if we intentionally disobey God, evil will attack us. Like, like Jonah and the whale. He intentionally disobeyed God and he got in the belly of the whale. He got swallowed up. Problems started. That's where problems start from. So we must live a repentant life, okay? Number three, recognize that maybe somebody in your bloodline left the door open to the devil. So it may not even be you. It could just be generationally that something has happened, all right? Where uh, uh, in your generation something happened. You go and read the Old Testament, read numbers, because sin can attach itself to generations. So we, 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 we repent for the sins of our forefathers. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. I repent of the sins of my forefathers. You don't know what they've done. So it may not be you, but you, we, may, we may be condemned for our forefathers' weak, wickedness. We may be suffering because of what they've done, and we need to renounce that. If my forefather was a Freemason, they've made a vow with the devil, with dark things. And I need to renounce that or break that. Otherwise, it will be working against your generations. You have the authority to close every door to evil. Close it. Every door that was open through ignorance, through sin, we can close that door. Matthew 5, 17. Praise the Lord. So let me quickly go. Quickly, my time is, you know, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot here. I don't think I will finish it in one day. It's, it's quite a lot. You know, I just want you to recognize that you've been filled and anointed. Okay. You've been filled and anointed to pray, to live by the power of the Holy Spirit, to use the authority. You've been called, you've been appointed, you've been filled, you've been anointed. All right. So use the authority in Christ, your ability, use it, use it. Praise the Lord. All right, release the power of God by using the authority. That's what you do. You release the power of God by using the keys of the kingdom, by using the authority that has been given to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So what am I saying? Be like a police officer. You've been given the right. Be a police officer, all right? In the realm of the kingdom, in the realm of the spirit, all right? Use your warrant. Exercise your authority, okay? Bear the badge of Christ's authority. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And then, finally, I'm going to talk about deliverance uh, in, in many weeks to come. So just bear with me as, as God leads me, all right? So um, 
How does the enemy attack quickly? I'm going to go through this very quickly. Okay. Number one, the enemy can attack you after you've had a great spiritual experience. Okay. After you've been high in the Lord, miracles have happened. So many things like Jesus fasted and prayed after he had been baptized, you know, so the heavens opened, you know, God is saying, this is my son, my beloved, I'm well pleased, you know, guess what happened after that? He was led by the spirit into the desert and tempted by the devil. Where he was having a good time with the Lord, acknowledging him, this is my son, I'm well pleased. When things are going good, after a great spiritual experience, you could get an attack from the devil. He may attack. Read Matthew chapter 3, 16, 17, and chapter 4, verse 1. All right. So always be ready, okay? So when things are going good, be ready for a spiritual attack. So just pray. Pray against counterattacks as you're experiencing that high in the Lord, all right? Secondly, you could get attacked at the beginning of a new spiritual endeavor. When you're beginning something new, a new ministry, you know, a new charity for the Lord, uh, uh, you know, you could be attacked by the devil. That's what happened to Jesus when he began his public ministry, you know, so remember that. Okay, so when you began to proclaim the things of the kingdom, when you begin to do things for Christ, you want to accomplish for Christ, the enemy attacked Jesus. So remember, at the beginning of a new spiritual project, endeavor, whatever you want to do for the Lord, attack comes. I remember one of my sisters here, she moved to a different country, a new territory. She's about praying. She goes around, you know, the community, you know, taking notice of things and the enemy came and attacked her. It's only because you are into a new project in the Lord. Okay. The other time that you could be attacked by the enemy is when you're physically vulnerable. When you're in a weak place, in a weak position, physically, emotionally, maybe you're not feeling well. You know, the enemy will start talking to you, you know, oh yeah, you know, you've got this disease, you've got that disease, you won't be well, all sorts of things physically or even emotionally. You could be attacked when you're physically vulnerable or emotionally vulnerable. The enemy can come in there. After Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the enemy came. The enemy came. All right. He was hungry. When you're fasting, the enemy tries to tempt you. He comes. <laughs> you'll open the fridge four times and then you remember I'm fasting and then you'll see the banana that you don't notice on the table you'll notice it that day that banana will look magnified and bigger you know the grapes in the fridge will be like oh that salad is oh you'll be smelling baked potatoes in the oven even if it's not cooking <laughs> things are cooking whilst you're fasting the devil is a liar <laughs> Hallelujah. He's such a tempter. You see, when Jesus was hungry, he went to tempt Jesus. So when you're physically vulnerable, he could come and attack you. And then this is one that I want us to take notice of a lot when you're alone. He attacks people when they're alone. When you're in that quiet place, he comes. Remember, he was tempted of the devil when the spirit led him into the, into the wilderness. Okay, Matthew 4.1. So when you're in that lonely place, the enemy can come. He will tell you things. You need a boyfriend. You need a girlfriend. You're too lonely, you know, or you need this. You, he will, and, or make you feel sorry for yourself or begin to tell you things that are irrelevant. He will start distracting you with things that you didn't even think. It's not even you. Those things are not you. It's just the enemy just throwing things your way. So pray. When you're alone, just say, Father, fill me with your presence. You know, you could be in the house and it will be like there's 10 of you there. And you're the only one there. And then you may be attacked from an unexpected source, like friends, someone who you didn't even think would attack you. Somebody you've known for years, you could know somebody for 20 years, and they come against you just like that. One after the other, after the other. That's the enemy. Hmm. But this happens a lot. Your friend can attack you. And then I want you to remember, number six, Satan will come back again and again. So maybe you've been through something, you've overcome, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, praise the Lord, hallelujah. We overcame that thing. Remember, he's going to regroup again. He's coming back. 
He's coming back. Be aware. The Bible's in Luke 4, 5, 10, when the devil finished the test, he departed from Jesus until an opportune time. You see, he departed for another opportunity to come. Be, be vigilant, watch and pray. Satan will go, but he's planning to come back. So don't be too relaxed. Keep praying, keep speaking the word, continue as the disciples did. Don't be harassed by the devil, speak the word. So you may have won a particular victory over the devil, but he's coming back to fight another time. But we must constantly be in the word. Plead the blood of Jesus when you wake up in the morning. Give the Lord authority over your day. Give him lordship of your day, of your decisions. Say, Father, I commit this day into your hands. I plead the blood of Jesus over this day. I give you lordship over my week, over my day, over the rest of this year, over all my decisions, almighty God. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Deliver me from evil, O oh God, in Jesus' name. And finally, I want to say to you, remember you are victorious. You're not defeated. You're not defeated. You're victorious. Don't stay in defeat avenue. Don't live there. Pack your bags. Get out of defeat avenue and come unto victorious. Come unto victorious road, victorious living, victorious breathing, victorious speaking. Praise the Lord. The devil will do what the devil does. Demons will do what they're assigned to do, to attack, to steal, to kill, to destroy, to entice, to sin. All of those things that they do. But remember that you are victorious in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, nay, in all of these things, we are more. We are more than conquerors. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You will be rescued in Jesus' name. The Lord will rescue us from every evil attack and save us for his heavenly kingdom in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus second timothy 4 18 second timothy 4 18 second timothy 4 18 so i want us to be aware of how the enemy is working okay let's not be ignorant i can come here and preach sugar and honey to you but i'm just speaking to us today be very aware don't allow the enemy to harass you don't allow demons to attack you like that because he attacks when he thinks it's to his advantage. He will attack like that. Don't let him, don't allow him. So let me repeat, he will attack a time after great spiritual experience or right before you're going to begin a new spiritual venture. When you're vulnerable, either physically, emotionally or mentally, or when you're alone. So be on guard and pray and pray and praise. Praise the Lord. When you don't know what to do in the middle of the night, I praised. I put my praise and worship on throughout the night and I slept like a baby. They're going to and fro. There's no rest for the wicked, says the Lord. There's no rest. They don't have rest, but we have rest in Christ. Praise Jesus. So let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your word. We give you praise, glory, adoration. Thank you for the expression of your heart, oh God. Help us, Father God, to, to, to just walk in it, to soak in it, to, to exercise our authority that you've given us. Give us deep revelation in your word, oh God, to understand what is necessary to do at given times, almighty God. Lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. I pray for each and every one in this place, O oh God. Whoever has been having bad dreams, Father, we take authority in the realm of the Spirit. We bind that bad dream right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We cast it out. We bind oppression. We bind every lie that the enemy is telling you right now. It will not come to pass in Jesus' name. We negate and neutralize every bad dream. We bind it from coming to pass. We cast it out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for your word that sets us free. We thank you for your word that never comes back to you void, but accomplishes that to which it has been sent. Thank you for sending your word and setting your, us free. Thank you for sending your word and giving us freedom, liberty, healing, deliverance. We're healed. We're delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for your word. Jesus, you are the living word and we rest in you. We bless you. I cover each and every one in this place with the blood of Jesus. And I bind any counterattacks over their lives in Jesus' name. I pray for our young ones, Father God, who face temptation every day. Lord, strengthen them. Give them the grace, Father, to overcome every obstacle, Father. We will scale every wall and run through every troop in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we're praying. Amen. Amen. If you've been listening to me via YouTube or any other medium, I pray over you. I cover you the blood of Jesus. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. Will you pray after me if you'd like to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? He is the one that has the authority to overcome all of this evil that we've been talking about. You see, you don't have your own power to stop those bad dreams. You don't have your own power to stop all the attacks. But when you come to Christ, he confers the authority on you. He gives you what you don't have. He gives you power. He gives you might. He gives you ability. He gives you enablement. So will you just come to him and come and receive the power that you need? Say, Lord Jesus, say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you today and I thank you for your word that has set me free. I ask you to come and be my own personal Lord and Savior and teach me how to fight these battles. Teach me your ways. Show me your ways. I repent of all my sins. I ask you, please, Jesus, forgive me and teach me. Show me your way. I receive your peace today. And I give my heart to you. From today onward, I declare and I decree. I declare that you are my Lord and personal Savior. And I decree that I overcome by your blood and by the word of my testimony. In Jesus' name, amen. I cover you with the blood of Jesus as you prayed that prayer. The Lord has received your prayer. All he wants is your heart and he will show you the way. we we'll cover you with the blood of Jesus. If you'd like to contact us, the email address is churchofnewdestiny at gmail.com, churchofnewdestiny at gmail.com. God bless you, and thank you for listening to us. In Jesus' name, you are an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Amen. <laughs>